So, with the trade yesterday for the Brooklyn Nets, I wholeheartedly believe that they just ensured their chance at playing in the NBA Finals and being the representative from the Eastern Conference as Eastern Conference champions and probably NBA champions, depending on who they play. So let's go ahead and compare Brooklyn to the teams in the Eastern Conference. Let's start with, uh, you know, the Central Division that has three teams going crazy with the Bulls, Cavs, and Bucks. Let's be real with the Bulls. Um, you know, they're probably not, they might not get Alex Caruso back for the playoffs. If they do, it's going to be probably on a minutes restriction. Lonzo Ball, you know, we'd be getting our first playoff action of Lonzo Ball and Zach Levine's career. I don't know if they step up to that task or not. With DeMar DeRozan, DeMar DeRozan has been historically shaky in the playoffs. I don't know if you want that against possibly the best player in the NBA and Kevin Durant. Now let's look at their own division, the Atlantic division. You've got four teams right now but with Brooklyn, and even the Knicks are still somewhat in play-in contention, at least at this point. you got the Celtics, Raptors, and 76ers. Now, the 76ers just destroyed their depth by trading Simmons, Curry, and Drummond, as well as a couple first-round picks for James Harden. Do we really know that Joel Embiid and James Harden are going to be there in the playoffs? I don't know. We've had, you know, historical references saying that, you know, neither of those guys are going to play in the playoffs at some point. The Toronto Raptors, yeah, they're cool. They're young, but they don't have a center. They don't have anyone that can guard Kevin Durant. So they're not doing anything to Brooklyn. Boston, they don't have anyone that can match Kevin Durant or guard Kevin Durant. So uh, nothing's happening there. The only team right now who has a chance to knock off the Brooklyn Nets is the Miami Heat. And that's because not only do they have someone that can try to guard Kevin Durant with Jimmy Butler, they have other guys around him who step up when they need it, with, whether it's Kyle Lowry, whether it's, you know, if they get Victor Oladipo back at some point this season, that'll be huge. But other guys that are there, you know, P.J. Tucker, he'll probably take a crack at Kevin Durant a couple times if they get matched up. In the playoffs, Bam Adebayo is an incredible young center. You know, Duncan Robinson off the bench, Max Struess, Gabe Vincent. Uh, I still don't think Omer Yurtsevin gets enough time. But hey, Dwayne Dedman does a really good job as that backup center. The only the only finals matchup in the Eastern Conference that has a chance of dethroning the Brooklyn Nets, or not dethroning them, but taking them out of playoff, taking them out of the playoffs, is the Miami Heat. But even then, I don't see Miami beating Brooklyn because even if, you know, if Jimmy Butler and P.J. Tucker hold Kevin Durant to 80% of what he's capable of doing, that's still probably 35 points a night in the playoffs. That's unmatchable by Miami because nobody can just do that for the Miami Heat now. And now I, I want to talk about, you know, a lot of people are probably going to say, oh, the Brooklyn Nets are 29 and 26. or They might not even have a 500 record before the All-Star break. And I, I admit that. Yes, the Brooklyn Nets are nowhere near where we thought we were going to see them this year but you know this whole record thing in the eastern conference has not mattered for the past 20 years uh you know there has not been a single number one overall seed to to not only win the finals but even make the finals the last number one seed in the eastern conference to make the finals I'm trying to go back and look. You know, even when LeBron was in Cleveland, they had one year where they made the finals as the number one seed. That was in 2015, 2016. Other than that, there's not a single team who is the number one seed that made the finals. You know, LeBron in Cleveland didn't do it. Even LeBron in Miami didn't do it. So the, the whole seeding thing, it doesn't matter. Once you're actually in the playoffs, that's all that matters. Kevin Durant in the playoffs is the most unguardable player in NBA history. He's damn near towards the top, at least, probably with guys like LeBron and Michael Jordan. So at the end of the day, you know, I'm just going to wrap this up. The only thing that you have to really think is, at this point, the Brooklyn Nets have nobody really believing in them. And it's weird to say because they have probably the best scorer in NBA history with Kevin Durant. And with a fully healthy team, if Joe Harris gets healthy, if Kyrie Irving is able to pull play 100% of games, whether, you know, whatever way that ends up happening. Uh, 
if Nick Claxton steps up, if Blake Griffin, LaMarcus Aldridge, James Johnson as those vets step up, Seth Curry, uh, you know, they've got some guys that if they step up and play at 100% and are healthy, Brooklyn has no match. And I really wholeheartedly believe they're going to represent the East in the conference uh, as the conference champion. And, you know, if they luck out and they play a team like Phoenix in the NBA Finals, if they luck out and they play a team like Utah, or if they play a team, who else is really good in the West right now? If they luck out and they play someone like Memphis in the NBA Finals, the only team I could really see beating the Brooklyn Nets is the Golden State Warriors from the Western Conference. So if they luck out and they don't play Golden State, even if they play Golden State, I think there's a really good shot that Brooklyn ends up winning the NBA Finals this year. 